right, welcome to the STOA, everyone. Uh, we have a very fun event today. Uh, it's gonna be about an app called Random Nautica. Um, so our friend, uh, Chris uh, Gabriel, who's, who's here today, um, when his first, or one of his, uh, maybe his second visit at the STOA, he mentioned this Random Nautica thing and uh, it intrigued me and he, he, and he highly recommended uh, that I check it out. And so I started experimenting with it and then all these weird things started happening, uh, kind of really cool connections, which I wrote about in, in um, one of my journal entries and a lot of Stoans started using it too and reporting a bunch of weird connections as well. Um, so I invited uh, the founder of uh, the app, the creator of the app, Joshua Langfielder, uh, who's here today. And uh, how today is going to work, um, I'm going to take in Chris uh, from Meme uh, Analysis, uh, who's, who's good friends with Josh, and uh, they're going to have a conversation for about 30 minutes. And um, anytime during the conversation, just put your questions in the chat. Uh, Chris will take me during the Q&A portion. Uh, and then uh, uh, I'll take you in to ask Josh your question. If you don't want to be on YouTube, because this will be on YouTube, just indicate that and I'll read your question on your behalf. Um, so before I will take in uh, Chris, uh, we're going to watch like a, a, like a brief, like two minute uh, video um, that was sent to me on what is Random Nautica, just so you get like a one-on-one of it uh, in case you're not familiar. So we'll watch that now. All right. The world is a big, majestic place. Wide open spaces, sprawling cities, and unbelievable nature is ours to discover. But how much have you really explored? What if there was more wonder to wonder? What if the mind, your mind, and your thoughts had an impact on the environment around you? The Randonauts are a group of curious explorers around the world who think this might be the case. They test this theory with the help of a quantum random number generator and Mother Nature. The results of the randonaut journeys can only be called a phenomenon at this point. So here's how this works. Use the Randonautica app to access a QRNG or quantum random number generator, which you guessed it, generates a truly random number in the form of coordinates. The app can limit the radius of the quantum point so that we're able to explore the world directly around us without driving all day. And to make things even more interesting, randonauting isn't just about exploring the world around us. It's also produced some pretty interesting synchronicities or coincidences. And some experts are theorizing the quantum process may even be influenced by the user's thoughts and consciousness. This is why we ask our randonauts to set an intention for their journey before using the app. These intentions can be big or small, grand or trivial. Either way, we want to see what happens. So keep your eyes open and let's get ready for a real world adventure that's as bizarre and fun as it sounds. All right. So if you haven't downloaded the app, maybe you can download it throughout the, this conversation today. I'm going to go on a, a random Nautica walk after it and perhaps you can join me. We can kind of share our thoughts. Um, so that being said, I will take in Chris now for uh, the dialogue to begin. You're up, my friend. All right. So, Josh, you know, we've, we've talked before uh, about this on podcasts and stuff. But I think one question that maybe many of the people are wondering, because um, if they have heard about Randonautica, they've probably heard about some of the really astounding synchronicities. I was wondering if there was a point before you fully committed to Randonautica, was there a point where you realized this is real? This is like a real, you know, in the midst of a, a, an astounding synchronicity that you realize that this is the real deal. Yeah, it's quite easy um, for me to recollect. Um, my first point, it just took me to a cemetery with a sign right at the point that said the garden of inspiration. And so I was like, hmm, that's pretty interesting. That's, that's close. That's close to like what my intention was. And then the second point, I just found a bottle of pee, which ended up becoming like a meme throughout the random not community. But none, none of that was like too astounding. The third point, however, 
I found this mysterious drum in the woods. You can see it over there. And that was pretty weird. Like just in the middle of Dallas, Texas for there to be a random drum. And I left it there because I thought it was someone's ritual working space. And I kind of booby trapped it to see if anyone would move it. And I would go back periodically and check on it and see like if it had moved. And it never ended up moving. But I took my best friend there to check it out. And when we went, there was like this snake pendant just at eye level hanging off on a vine. And he looked at me like, dude, look at this. And it was like we saw a ghost or something. It was so spooky. So that was event number two. That was like, this is pretty, pretty dang weird. And there might be something going on. Like, because when I first started, I didn't know if there was going to be a portal opening or if the MIB were going to come MI debrief me or I didn't know. I wasn't really sure. I just was diving into the unknown. Kind of like, you know, people do. Thrill seekers, mainly. But the third time I went back to check on this drum point after I saw the snake pendant i almost stepped on a rattlesnake nest and it was like a bright red rattlesnake and i had no idea there was pygmy red rattlesnakes in north texas but when that rattlesnake rattled its tail and i stared death in its black beady eyes my awareness was permanently heightened. I mean, for weeks after that, I was seeing like little snakes out of the corner of my eye. And like, it was a very powerful and transformative experience. And it wasn't just like something that, you know, I could have come up with, like if I were to write a script or something to try and make a, fake random kit video like like what is so in vogue these days yeah no joke but it was so outside of what I could have imagined was going to happen and was so surprising that that's when not only me but a lot of people started taking it seriously and started going, wow, you really can't find like things that are well outside of your everyday kind of routine. And so I would say that was the catalyst, the, my third point ever. And uh, it was, it was, it's still um, probably the most um, powerful random knot trip I've had just because of being such a close brush with death but like if i if you think about the symbolism of the drum which is like so connected to shamanism and like you know someone marching to the beat of their own drum and then you think about the snake and the snake actually had like uh enough curves that it symbolize the, the rising of the kundalini and then the real snake like some garden of eating stuff which i mean it's not common knowledge that there are red rattlesnakes it, it was so far out that at that point i was fully into it there was no going back like it scratched the existential itch that I had been looking for. It almost uh, has a likeness to initiatory experiences. Exactly. Um, and I think what I've found, uh, it's, you know, the initiation is kind of an initiation into adulthood, into heroism. And it seems like Randonautica can kind of be that sort of narrative tool. Yeah. From, like it, it allows one to discover latent narratives and to create narratives you know 
Uh, what yeah. could you say to it as a, a narrative tool? I mean, that, that was my big contribution because I, I did not invent this concept of going to random places. People in Russia, like a small group of like seven to 10 people were experimenting with going to random places. And um, I decided to take this and kind of like make it so it wasn't hidden anymore and release it to the public. And when I did that, my innovation was um, this sort of self-organizing performance art where before it was like a scientific study and nobody really cared. But once you took the narrative part and said, hey, you could be, you could be the hero of your own legend by deviating outside of your normal routine, that's when people started to catch on. And yeah, it does have a lot of um, parallels with, uh, you know, the hero's journey. And, you know, everybody has their pet theories about how it works. And uh, it affects people in different ways. And uh, I think, you know, you really get what you put into it. And then and, and, uh, that has led to some interesting results. It's also, it's got that likeness, as you said, to the derive, the situationist uh, style where, and it even in, in the way that you put it in that kind of self-producing performance art, very yeah. situationist. Yeah. Um, another thing, so I'm not sure how many people here are like aware of some of the, the fundamentals, but would you want to speak a bit to like what an attractor is in the context of the app, what a void is and kind of, you know, what do they mean? You know, when people are using this tool, they might have a difficulty um, with those words, you know? Yeah, there's definitely a bar barrier with the lingo. And like, we were very careful to like, mimetically set up some of these words, like, because like at first a void was called a repeller and like no one w would use it because it's called a repeller and nobody wants to use it because like repeller is like poisonous. Void is still not great, but at least it more accurately describes what's happening in the algorithm. So when we talk about anomaly, attractor or void, that has to do with the my machine interaction algorithm, which takes the random distribution of points and it measures if there are any like clusters or empty spaces that cluster or are empty to an improbable degree. So when you have a random distribution, you have like a statistically normal, like what you would expect the distribution to be. But what our library does, our algorithm, is it takes these anomalies where these points cluster or are empty to an improbable degree. And that's where we hypothesize that it, they may be influenced by consciousness. So there's two, point, two parts to the project. One is the my machine interaction, which we are personally very interested in because it's kind of on the fringes of science. And, and that's what we've always been into is like to push this into the mainstream. Um, and then the other part is breaking determinism, which is quite scientifically sound. And to, to do that, you, you just need pseudo randomness. You don't need quantum randomness. So there's two different parts of the project. My machine interaction, which is the anomalies, the voids, the attractors, which may, may be influenced by consciousness. And then there's the blind spot search, which is finding places that you never would have gone before. And that uses pseudo randomness because of the fact that it's not influenced by your consciousness. Because if a point is in fact influenced by your consciousness, and it's taking you somewhere where you thought of going or were talking about or influenced in some way, it no longer becomes a causal or paracausal. It becomes deterministic. It becomes causal. So you have to use pseudo randomness because you wouldn't have influenced it. But of course, you could use the my machine or action algorithm to set your intention for a place that you've never been before, 
which is in fact what was the first um, use case for it. So yeah, it's kind of like sounds uh, complicated, but it's really not. Um, if you go through our theory page, there should be like a visualization of the algorithm, which makes it more uh, easy to understand. This algorithm is an example of a majority vote algorithm, which basically it's like if the random number generator spits out a bunch of ones to an improbable degree when it should be like one zero one zero 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 one 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 zero, but it's like all ones or all zeros, we hypothesize that that distribution may be influenced by consciousness. And the funny thing is, like, we're talking about, like, influencing random number generators with our consciousness. These random number generators, like the industry standard ones, are in every single slot machine in every casino. And basically, if you get good at influencing probabilities, you're making yourself good at influencing probabilities and luck and so people will train influencing these random number generators and eventually go to this casino and play the slots and once they're good enough to create a bias to where they start winning at the slots they'll actually move to the black blackjack tables and start influencing the card shuffle so it's not just the random number generator, but my machine interaction or my matter interaction can happen in the macro world as well. It's just that it's easier to influence something that takes less energy to flip the bit or, you know, move the randomness around. So the more energy it takes, such as a card shuffle, is going to take more energy than moving an electron across a circuit. The electron moving across the circuit is going to be easier to influence. Yeah, we see uh, we see a lot of a lot of this kind of Randonautica tangent uh, aesthetic and content in Twin Peaks, right? The influencing of uh, of uh, slot machines, the importance of coordinates, and of course owls. Uh, would you want to yeah. tell us a little bit about the importance of the owl as the symbol of Randonautica? Yeah, the owl, it sort of um, chose us, you know? We didn't really, I didn't choose it. It, cho it chose us. Um, there just came a point where people started seeing owls um, and it became a meme. And uh, that's why we chose the owl as our symbol because the owl sees in the dark and random nods venture to places outside of their conscious awareness, which is like kind of symbolically seeing in the dark. Um, the owl also represents wisdom. And when you're out in the real world, learning about places you never would have learned about before, and, you know, maybe experiencing epiphanies or, you know, thoughts or possibilities you never would have before, um, that represents wisdom that you carry into your real life. So the owl uh, kind of became our sigil of, of sorts. And uh, Mike Cleland has a great book about called The Messengers about the owls. And uh, from what I can tell, this there's like some part of human consciousness that is like the owl spirit or something. And, and like this owl archetype is like pushing us to go into the unknown and, and, and wants us to evolve as a species um, by breaking out of our normal everyday routines. You know, speaking to the discovery of a latent spirit that arises within uh, the experience of randonauting um and you, you'd mentioned the piss bottle earlier um you know we we've noticed that memes arise in randonautica spontaneously you know it's not like a, a group of people go out 
and all experience the same thing. It's people that are far apart. Yeah. Experiencing the same across thing. the globe. Yeah. Truly international. Yeah. And, and that's what we discovered is like synchronicity is usually such a personal thing, but uh, that's why we are uh, creating this discover feed, which is like a social media component where people can publicly post their reports in a centralized fashion before we were just like posting them all over the internet in a decentralized way. Now people are going to be posting their reports in the app. And so we're going to start to really see uh, these synchronicities occur throughout the globe. And what's really interesting is that these people come from all different walks of life, uh, different levels of class um, in society, different levels of knowledge and education, and they're all united by curiosity. And you'll see these um, kind of memes spring up in different communities who start using Randonautica. And so like when we first started using it, the glove meme was like a big thing. People kept finding gloves and saying, oh, you need to find, you need to bring gloves when you go Randonautica because you kind of got to get down and dirty when you're in the woods sometimes. And like now I've seen in two or three different communities that popped up that are about Randonautica, you see the glove meme. And, and you start to see these like memes kind of like, it's like nested realities, like pe different people from all walks of life, but kind of experiencing the same thing. And even though it's powered by like the most uncertain and unpredictable force that humans can possibly find, order is created and that's one of the most interesting things and that's one of the most exciting things for me to see is if we can create some kind of global mythology or mythos with a novelty-based social media platform you know it uh, it speaks a lot to if people who've seen my channel know i'm always looking at the collective unconscious being expressed through the internet and through memes and the reason that I, I found your app so amazing is that it, it goes a step farther and allows you to interact with these archetypes and to have archetypal experiences, which is something that is truly novel. Um, in, in many ways, the first app of its kind. Um, I'm often criticizing apps as, uh, and just the internet in general, as something people get sucked into. It, it makes them immobile. But Randonautica is actually an app, a technology that inspires movement and puts you out into the world. And that's one of our core tenants. And we will keep doing that. Um, we, we want people off their phones, not on them. So even though we are like coming out with a social media thing where people can post their reports publicly, we have a lot of voyeurs who don't go Randonauting. They just want to see the results. So that's kind of for them. But Going forward, our philosophy is still to get people off their phones and into the real world. And instead of being guided by algorithms, being guided by their intuition and bringing back stories and sharing them with people. Because that was one of the main things I wanted to change was how we tell stories, especially stories about strangeness. Because a lot of times people will have really, really strange things happen to them and they won't know who to tell and they'll have no one to support them. And so we wanted to create a community where people could kind of integrate these experiences and learn from them and, you know, hopefully teach others who have these experiences. And, um, that's one thing we hope to achieve with this discover feed is integration of synchronicities and a lot i get emails all the time about people who were materialists and uh were stuck in this you know cartesian dualism paradigm and they went on one random not trip and they were like it changed my entire view of everything and this can be kind of just distressing 
it's a very challenging um, change in worldview. And I think some people react um, viscerally at this sometimes. Um, but this kind of was our plan. Like we were definitely like intentionally using guerrilla ontology to um, change people's minds in middle America and beyond. So speaking to that, um, the strangeness of things, let's go into some of the stranger elements of it. You know, we, we've been talking a lot about causality and what Jung talks about with synchronicity is the importance of the apparently impossible coincidence. You know, when we're talking about causality in the context of Rantanautica, um, what sort of psychic processes do you see at work? Like one could say there's, it's precognition. People are actually, um, they're, they're willing something, they're experiencing something that's already occurred in the future, or rather, are they, are they manifesting it? Are they uh, willing the occurrence and so on? What, what sort of causality is at play? I think the working theory right now is like called like the Asher Paris paradox. Um, you can Google the paper. Um, it's that the future, so your mind is accessing this intelligent field that contains information that's timeless. And the randomness is actually acting as a biofeedback device. So it's not actually Randomnautica or the algorithm that choose this point but it's your brain, your consciousness, your mind that chooses the point. And the randomness just acts as a biofeedback point to show where your consciousness has created this bias. And so this strangeness, it's not in Random Nautica, it's in you. And, um, you know, it, it all depends on how, how, um, you know, sometimes people will go and, and they won't, they won't believe that they'll just do it to fuck around and, you know, they think it's all BS and they'll still have weird things happen. So it's like belief isn't even necessarily necessary. Um, for the strangeness to occur. In fact, a lot of people get surprised and um, it can really shake up their worldview. And um, yeah, that's something we wanted to do. And like, we wanted to see what was outside of your normal frame of reference or frame of possibilities and see what was behind that veil and hopefully peek more at holistic reality. And that was really our intention. And just as with the owl, when one peeks behind the veil, often people are horrified, not just shook up, but, um, you know, and I think there, there's a lot of conspiracies around Ranzanautica. Like some people think, they honestly think that um, you guys have people making these things happen that there are like people yeah. making synchronicities happen you know that's just how people will naturally respond when strange things happen it must be a uh, conspiracy or it must be angels or devils. yeah like we got like an army of people leaving little trinkets around that's my favorite because it just makes me seem so powerful like i have an army of people across the globe leaving little trinkets surprise people i'll never deny it that would be uh that would be the ideal um like sherlock holmes right his his child army or his uh his homeless network you can just immediately uh that yeah. would be the arg randonautica is revealed as uh the the ultimate process in arg tech you have an interest in arg well, right? yeah that, that, that was my motivation before I created Random Odds was to create an ARG. And I, I was like just researching this stuff. I have no idea why, but passionately researching it. 
And then when I found this concept of sending people to random places, I was like, that's it. And it caught fire. Um, alternate reality gaming is interesting. Um, I think we've seen where it's gone too far. And, um, you know, we, it's a very powerful tool and um, it needs to be respected and used with um, grace. And, um, but you can't help humans from being what they are. You know, you give someone a tool to manifest anything and then they'll go out looking for death. And that's not something that's in Randonautica. That's just in people. And then people find what they're looking for and they blame Randonautica. When really you were the one looking for death and you found it. And so how can you blame Randonautica for that? That was your choice. I guess here's a question then, you know, is Randonautica a, a game? Is it something that you play? You know, how do you, how do you frame it? I consider it a period of play. So it's a game. Yeah, a game is a period of play. And Randonautica is like you curiously going to just see, you know, I have, when, when I do a Randonautica point, I have no expectation of what I'm going to see. None. A lot of people set intentions. I do sometimes when I'm with my team because they like to set intentions. We have a really cool YouTube video that just came out where we set an intention for people to be surprised and our camera crew to be surprised. And we knocked on the guy's door and he knew who we were and he'd seen me on Reddit before. And that was like really mind bending just to just go knock on some random guy's door and he already knows who you are. And then in, the, in the, his backyard, it had a sign that said, not all who wander are lost, which is from Tolkien which was very interesting because it was like the only thing in his backyard. And so we were definitely surprised by that. Um, you can see that on our YouTube channel. Um, my favorite intents are the ones that are open-ended. And, and instead of like, oh, I'm gonna find a red door. Um, and you find a red door. It's like, I want something so surprising that I would have never thought about it. And um, yeah, something so mind bending that I wouldn't have the capability of being creative enough to ask for that, to find it. Those are my favorite. Have you noticed or found any really fascinating or novel integrations of Randonautica into something uh, new and exciting? Who, who, is anybody using Randonautica really well in your view? yeah we had her on our live stream she uh she uses a drone so she gets to inaccessible areas by using a drone which is really interesting um if there's people who are using randonautica to like solve crimes or try and solve crimes um i've heard of more than one report of like a robbery being stopped because a randonaut happened to be there um, people seeking medical attention and a random knot shows up and calls the ambulance. Um, I'm consistently surprised uh, at what happens. But when you have millions of people searching the most hidden corners of the earth, the odds of finding anything at all in existence become pretty good. So, you know, the more random knots we get, you know, hopefully some day we find some peripheral from another dimension and they give us the key to invisibility or something like that's what we the tool is really for. Like it's literally based on Rick's portal gun and to explore the multiverse, which is connected by causality. And it speaks a bit to what we what we had talked about earlier, just that it is capable of revealing latent meaning, latent narratives that had otherwise been ignored and unseen. Like, you know, so many people, they look at their town and they, they see something they're bored of, but you, you just give a try to this app and you find something radically different, something you had never seen before.
Yeah. I mean, I think everybody has that. Like, unless you have, you know, taken a map and made a grid of your town and gone to each little square and checked each of them off, which people do this. Urban explorers do this. And I've talked to urban explorers who have used Randonautica and they still find, even though they, in a very like, uh, methodical way explored their whole town when they use randonautica they still found something they didn't when they were methodically searching their town because randonautica has a temporal component you're not just finding something in space but it's at a certain time as well so this goes back to the Asher pairs paradox which states that something in the future can influence the past. And so that when you go to this randomnot point, you have influenced the randomness coming from the future. And whatever you see is dependent on you observing it. So if you would have never rolled the randomnautica fate machine, this event would not have occurred because you would not have been there to observe it. It can be seen kind of like a tarot cards in that way as a, a generator of synchronicities and something that even, uh, I guess, in, involves itself within things like that retro causality as a, a sort of a, a divinatory tool do you right. find people use it for divination? I, I think um, I'm not really a fan of divination. It's more like a toy to me. Um, it's, it's good for inspiring uh, epiphanies, um, thought patterns you may not have considered before. Um, but as far as like using Randonautica, like a Ouija board or a tarot, I, I would put that like a toy kind of like the world's a little too busy kind of, but sometimes people do get clear signs like uh, this woman was random nodding and she was like, her attention was like her love. And uh, she couldn't stop thinking about her best friend the whole time she was random nodding. And she actually found a wedding invitation while she was random nodding. And then she posted on the subreddit that after this random nodding session where she set her intent for love, found a wedding invitation that she and her best friend actually confessed their love for each other and got engaged. And so random nautica is just mysteriously part of this story of these two people becoming engaged. And like, However that works, I have no idea, but it's just interesting that Randonautica plays like these parts in, in, in people's lives that, you know, it's just unexplainable. That's what I'm in it for. I, I, I don't want answers. I want more mystery. Well, and uh, <laughs> you don't want answers, but let's give give the people some answers. Peter, you want to come in and we'll field to have Josh field some questions? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Thank you, Chris. Um, so everyone, feel free to put your uh, questions in the chat. I'll call on you. Uh, I'll, I'll ask a few myself. Um, yeah, there's something about the expectation thing came up. It's like setting an intention is almost like the conscious component. And then perhaps expectations are like the unconscious components. And uh, like maybe there's fears associated with or like wanting to see something cool and or not wanting to be disappointed or whatever. Yeah. Uh, similar to Nathan's question. Um, so any, any kind of like thoughts on that interaction between the conscious and unconscious component of, of the, the process? Yeah, I mean, it definitely, it definitely um, can take you to places that you were not consciously intending. And um, there's ways to set it up. This is getting pretty deep into the science, but there's ways to set it up so that 
you only find what you were consciously looking for. So you set your intent for red door, you find a red door. We have it set up, however, that it's a little fuzzy and that you may find things that you didn't consciously intend because we want it to take you to places that you need to see but don't necessarily know you need to see. Whereas you could set it up to just be this quantum GPS. It's like, take me here and it takes you there. We think that's boring. So we purposely have set it up so that, yeah, th there is this expectation of surprise and you do get these unconscious intentions bleeding through. And uh, what we're doing is very rudimentary right now. Um, using machine learning, um, people can make very granular um, measurements of people's intent and actually find coherence between multiple users of the intent. And so this is something we have planned for the future, but we're a very small grassroots team. We chose not to take any outside funding because they were all like trying to make the app addictive and it's just not what we're about. So if you'd like to support us, become a pro random not subscriber. It's like a few bucks a month. Um, it allows you unlimited randonauting. We're going to add a lot more features for the pro randonauts. Um, the discover feed, which is like our public report system, like a social media system based on novelty, that'll be available first to the pro randonauts. So I would definitely uh, recommend becoming a pro randonaut subscriber and helping keep the lights on. And uh, the other question I had, um... And it is for uh, both um, you and Chris, uh, sort of like the aspirations you'd like to see, uh, the types of people using um, the app. Uh, I have this sort of journaling philosophical practice and I'm finding the, my use of the, the thing interfaces quite nicely with it when I'm like kind of stuck with uh, some kind of a or mystery. And then I just go on this random walk and then sometimes it's like a really clear symbol, kind of like, holy shit. Sometimes it's nothing. And then like, I, I kind of like use my creativity and then find something. Yeah. Uh, and, and as an aside, what I really love, which is sort of an unexpected thing, I'm like, you know, it usually it takes me on like 20 minute walks or 15 minute walks. I'm discovering neighborhoods I've never seen before nearby me. And it's like, I'm visiting a new country. So it's like building greater intimacy and novelty. And uh, it's really delicious with kind of my immediate surroundings. Yeah, I mean, like you're literally experiencing more of holistic reality. Right. And uh, yeah, things that were occulted come into the light. And so, yeah, it's really interesting. Everybody has that. Everybody has like a little garage down the shop or a little alleyway that they don't know about. They never had a reason to pay attention to. And uh, yeah, random can, can take you there. Like, uh, one morning I was thinking of pupusas, um, El, El Salvadorian cuisine, and uh, I went random nodding and the second place it took me to was a pupuseria. And it ended up being like my favorite restaurant for months. And as long as I lived in Dallas, I went there like almost every week. And so just to think that if I hadn't gone on that random trip and thought about pupusas randomly that morning, I know all those meals I had for months and months and months were affected by that single trip. And this is what's interesting. This is like, it kind of causes a cascade throughout your life. And the effects of these journeys can, you know, not be apparent until years later, even. This is what initially um, caused the original researchers to think that there was something to do with time because they just spammed out random coordinates to like 70,000 people. And they had a way to view um, if anyone posted about these reports using Google alerts. And the thing is that people would have these weird existential experiences even years after the original point was sent to them. So there was some weird thing to do with time. Like, even though it was a pseudo random number generator, it was just a random point. Like one person went to the point and 
it had another set of coordinates there. And then there was apparently a YouTube video of someone saying they went to this random point and they found this woman who changes people's fates. And like that woman would like, if you met her, you would like automatically become successful or something. And then what's interesting is um, the Phaeton Project guys, the Russian guys who came up with this concept, um, tried to contact this YouTuber who talked about the woman who changed people's fates and they deleted the video and acted like nothing, it, they had nothing to do with it. And it was like super sketchy and like just really weird, like why they would act that way. Like it's, it's pretty interesting. It's like very powerful. It, we're stuck like between this interesting, there's like this interesting medium between like either people really believe it and they use it and they have interesting experiences. And then there's other people who are like pseudo skeptics who won't even go to try, um, just think it's all bullshit. And then like, for instance, we had one person who went random nodding and their intent was to get a new van. Well, they happen to have a puppet in the back of their van uh, connected to a car battery. The car battery explodes and um, their car ends up exploding. And uh, I, I actually still have footage of this because they created a GoFundMe and they ended up getting a new van because of this GoFundMe because the puppet exploded in the back of their car. So this is like an example of be careful what you wish for. But while, while I was doing my due, due diligence and like making sure this was a legit story, this person was just like, how could you release this to the public? Like, this is too powerful. Like people shouldn't have this power. And so like on the one side, we have people like exploding their vans because they selfishly ask for a new one. And then on the other side, you have people who are like, oh, it's a big joke. Let's just, you know, set our intent for murder. It's just like an interesting medium. It's like, I kind of feel like maybe like how a priest feels like, just like kind of disappointed in how people use, you know, the technology. Yeah, yeah. And so, so that, that brings um, uh, us back to the, the question I wanted to ask Christian you. Um, sort of like, what would you like to see? So I'm, I'm using sort of like a philosophical thing, uh, but, but I can see this interfacing quite nicely with so many different modalities and like intentional uh, modalities like therapy or activism, like, you know, Guy Debord yeah. White, or addressing existential risk or creating art or whatever. And maybe this is a, uh, to bring Karsh, James Carson to this, like finite games and infinite games. The way yeah. I see how you're holding it is like, you want a great, uh, greater intimacy with the mystery. So you want to play the infinite game with this and build a community around it. But yeah. this is not to say that the app can't be purposed to playing finite games like activism, yeah. therapy or whatnot. So yeah. perhaps a question for both you and Chris, uh, like what would you like to see people use this more in maybe the, the finite game sense? I use it and in my system, but I'm trying to, you know, my channel focuses on uh, the internet problems resulting from the internet and the solution for many many of them is really simply just you know they're they're so into technology we need technology to get them into reality and randonautica is right. that middle ground it is a, a finite game that will allow them to enter the infinite game um and it is because they are stuck generally many people are stuck within singular paths they are unable to get out of the fact that there is now a very accessible game with which one can try new things you know we have it's such a valuable tool yeah it is a valuable tool so there's like questions here saying like there's like a positive reporting bias for the community feedback and how often do you or people report absolutely zero meaningful experiences? Our effect size is extremely small. Um, people report like nothing, like a lot. Um, yeah. And it's like, uh, you know, you, you'd say you never see the, the, the reports where uh, you know, people never find anything. It's not true. Like there's like thousands of posts on Randonautica or the random not subreddit where uh people are just like oh well it was a nice walk but really didn't find anything 
interesting. Um, but that's what it's for. It's not necessarily for finding the most profound things ever. It's like for just the curiosity of seeing something that you hadn't before. Um, uh, Jeff uh, and or uh, Jason, would you like to jump in to kind of um, further elaborate on your question? Um, <clears throat> yeah, well, actually, I mean, that was actually a, a really good um, answer. And the reason I, I've been asking both of these questions, I guess, is because I, I've lived in San Francisco for a long time. And part of uh, what I've I fell in love with the city over is the ability to like go off in, in any direction, if, you have, if you're open to it and you go off in any random direction, within 20 minutes, you're gonna have a number of, of crazy, meaningful experiences. You're gonna meet characters who, yeah. they come out of their house and they're an amateur historian of some slice of, of knowledge that like, <laughs> and, they'll, and they'll talk to you. And like, there are places, there are neighborhoods similar to Peter's experience, like within San Francisco, which is tiny, it's a seven mile by seven mile square area right um so but i know people who don't have the same experience as me in, in san francisco but i know a lot who do and those people tend to be people who gravitate to this city and so my other question kind of dovetails in where i was asking are there certain locales that are that seem to do better than others and 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 then yeah. as a way of capping this off like um i can personally imagine i haven't used the app yet but i am definitely going to and I expect that when I do, um, it's possible that the app could melt down if I use it in San Francisco. Like it just, <laughs> yeah. so I don't know, just uh, your impression. You could always be surprised. I mean, the app is a tool. You don't really need it. It's your brain, like the power, the magic behind Randonautica is your brain. So like it is your mind. So it, you don't really even need Randonautica if, you know, you're accustomed to, you know, taking the derive or just going on random walks. Um, but Randonautica has been the catalyst for people doing this. And I do think that although our effect size is extremely small, um, there is just like these chances for these just one in a million coincidences. Like I'll say one real quick, like I was walking um, to a random point talking about giant skeletons with my friend. Uh, the point was in the middle of the water. We go to the water's edge and there's a guy meditating. I asked the guy if he had heard of the studies of randomness um, being affected by meditators. And he said, yes. And then he said, look across the lake. Uh, the legend is that there are giant skeletons buried in that rock wall. And you can Google rock wall giant skeletons and it'll pull up this urban legend. But just the fact that me and my friend were talking about giant skeletons and then we found this guy meditating and then he had heard of like meditators influencing randomness and then just directed us exactly to what we were talking about like i can't seem to like like the skeptic in me doesn't believe that that was just a coincidence like there had to have been something like that's just too fucking weird dude um, Joshua or Chris, do you have a hard stop in the hour or could you squeeze in one or two more questions? I can squeeze in a few more. Um, uh, so we'll do two more. Uh, Doug, uh, you're up. Yeah, I was just wondering if you could talk about um, what you're using to measure the probability uh, uh, deviances of those hotspots and voids and things. Like, is it 0 0.01 or 0 0.00001? Like, what do you, what, or, and can you, can you change um, the threshold? That's not my area of expertise. Um, if you really, really were curious and you, if you get on our Telegram, find Newton Winter. He designed the algorithm. He would be able to answer these questions for you. Okay, thanks a lot. Yeah. Uh, so I guess I'll, I'll ask the last question again for Chris and Joshua. Um, so one thing a lot of people talk about is like this meaning crisis that people are experiencing and I can see using random Nautica as, as a way to like, like get your meaningfulness reps in. Uh, That's one of the reasons I created it. 
was people having meaningless lives and like nothing matters we live in a simulation nothing matters and like this is a sincerity mo movement where like everything you do matters and yeah that's my metaphysical perspective on things it's like i really wanted people to, to understand that what they do matters yeah 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 and i'm finding just like either it's exploring a new area or seeing my local area in new eyes or getting these weird coincidences or just sinking in a moment and kind of finding something emerge just creates that that sense of meaningfulness when i do it yeah. uh and i'm curious if chris has any, any thoughts on this i just posted a meme yesterday it did very well and it was of you know, it's a famous uh, etching of a monk crawling out of nature and into a mystical world but the meme shows that the mystical world is just uh, an American highway yeah. built neon signs. And I find that Randonautica reveals that is true. When you, you rend the veil and you just, you see the truth of your area. You see the truth of, the, of nature and of space and time. And it's not, it doesn't need to be mystical abstractions. Right. Meaning is something that you can experience and live. It doesn't, like, I think the problem with many people who are materialists, ironically, is that their only vision of meaning is as something abstract and immaterial, when in fact, meaning is the truest uh, expression of the material. Um, and Randonautica puts one in contact with the, with the latent narratives in a given space yeah it's it's just so interesting that uh you know it leads you to a material space but it can lead you also to a place in the realm of ideas um and yeah i think that's pretty unique and i think a lot of people aren't ready for it and like that they're learning like this has been a huge like initiation for a lot of people and i mean just the fact that like we blew up in the middle of the global pandemic and gen z was just like all about finding death and creepiness and it's just like such a like gauge on the collective unconscious um, i'm interested to see like how it grows and like we've been getting a lot of reports of people seeing ufos Things are about to get really weird, I think. So buckle up, everyone. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and the, so uh, I will take uh, you and Josh and Chris for kind of final words, but just uh, if you haven't downloaded the app, download the app, and I'm going to go on a random Nautica walk after this. And uh, hope you Yeah, just making sure it's the right one. It's Random Nautica by Random Nauts Co. There's so many knockoffs. Mm. Um, just go to randomnautica.com. There should be like a link. And it's always going to be the one with the randomnautica.com logo. There's so many knockoffs of people like just trying to make money off of our movement. So make sure you download the right one. Um, we have the uh, official guide to Randonautica coming out. You can pre-order it. We have a lot of cool merch. Um, all this stuff goes to keeping the lights on. We're like a break-even company. We do it for the love, not the money um i have no plans i will dig my heels into the dirt before i take money from one of these venture capitalists that want to make it addictive so um, yeah. yeah and pick up trash it's like the perfect camouflage like you're somewhere you shouldn't be if you're picking up trash you're just a good citizen and don't trespass and if you do trespass and get in trouble it's your fault not ours beautiful <laughs> well thank you so much man this has been fun and i'm just like honored to be on this podcast like you guys are really cool yeah man my pleasure uh chris any any closing thoughts uh, you'd like to leave us with oh well, uh, if you if you like seeing what matters about the internet you should look into reality witness the flow of memes in the real world and mm -hmm. seek meaning every day yeah.
I like that. Yeah. Thanks for thanks for joining, Chris. Love you, buddy. Uh, so, so I'll make some uh, closing announcements for upcoming sessions. But uh, Josh, Chris, thanks so much for coming to the Stoa. I'd love to have you back. Um, and uh, to, anytime, uh, uh, invite me. Later today, we have uh, circling a practice session. It's a Patreon only event at six p.m. Eastern time. So if you haven't touched uh, the interest objective practice of circling, highly recommend it. Um, and then dead cool, unmasking cool. Alex Ebert from the Magnetic Fields. Uh, um, or what's what's that band that he's called? Um, give me a moment. Yeah, Edwin Sharp and the Mimetic Zeros. Uh, he's coming in to uh, demystify cool and how people weaponize cool and the status of cool. Uh, so it's kind of cool. A rock star is coming in. You might have a slide presentation for us. So I like that juxtaposition. So you can check that out all on the Stoa.ca. Uh, so that being said, everyone, thank you for coming to the Stoa today. Thank you.